eating one meal a day or OMAD is a pretty effective strategy for doing intermittent fasting and losing some weight with it. Usually on OMAD you eat your calories within one to two hours, but some people can still mess it up. In this video I'm gonna give you the top 10 tips for eating one meal a day. They can actually be used for any other type of intermittent fasting. Madness. Number one, go for long walks. When you're fasting your liver glycogen is already low when you're producing ketones. Walking in a fast state is great for burning more fat because you'll use those ketones to fuel that activity. The best thing about walking is that you can walk for hours because it's such low intensity and it's not gonna damage your nervous system and you're not gonna burn out. I myself aim for at least 10 to 13,000 steps a day and on my rest days I may end up getting 15,000 steps. Number two, drink salted water in the morning. Drinking some water with a pinch of sea salt in the morning right after waking up is a great way to lower your cortisol and not get stressed out because of fasting. It can also help with digestion and general gut health. 3. Postpone your caffeine intake. One of the worst things you can do right after waking up is drink some caffeine because it's gonna overstimulate cortisol. Run! Before drinking any coffee, you should wait at least 2 to 3 hours after waking up to allow your own body's natural cortisol to gradually lower itself. From a circadian rhythm perspective, the best time to drink coffee is between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's going to enable your body to clear the caffeine from a bloodstream before going to bed. Number four, stay productive. One of the reasons I myself eat once a day is that it helps me to stay productive during the day and I don't have to waste time on eating and I don't have to think about it either. Fasting for me is like the best nootropic because it increases my focus, alertness, and it also eliminates all the distractions. A great way to not get hungry during the fast is to just do something productive and use that increased brain power for something that is useful. Number five, avoid artificial sweeteners. There's nothing inherently wrong with artificial sweeteners if you do it in moderation and you don't do it all the time, but the problem is that they may become a distraction and they also may cause some sugar cravings. If you're the kind of person who can't control themselves, then it's just easier to avoid all the sweeteners together. Number six, train at the end of your fast. For most people, the best time to train would be at the end part of their fast. That's gonna preserve more muscle mass and it also has a beneficial effect on body composition. If you eat before training, then you don't really have nothing to worry about in terms of muscle catabolism and losing muscle because you still have those amino acids from that meal in your blood system. But if you've already fasted for like 18 to 20 hours and then you work out, then it's very important to actually have that post-workout meal as close to your workout as possible, as to not experience excessive muscle catabolism in the post-workout scenario. Number seven, plan what you're going to eat. If you break your fast with whatever is in the fridge, then you may run into some issues. It's just gonna cause randomness, cluelessness, and potentially binging if you don't know how much calories you have to eat. That's why it's so much easier to plan out how many calories you're going to eat, what kind of foods are you going to do with it, and when to stop eating. Don't be that person who doesn't know why they can't lose weight, although they're just overeating calories. It's a trap! Number eight, have an early OMAD. Most people who do intermittent fasting, they skip breakfast and they consume the calories later in the day. That's fine, and research shows that there isn't any difference between eating earlier versus eating later when it comes to general health and metabolic condition. But I think that you still wouldn't want to have too much food too close to bedtime. That's why I recommend having an earlier OMAD and finishing your meals at least four to five hours before going to bed. I myself finish my food at five to six p.m. and that gives me plenty of time to digest the food before going to bed. Number nine, focus on nutrient dense foods. If your eating frequency is lower because of intermittent fasting, then the nutrient density of those meals has to be that much higher to compensate for it. You should also eat a bit slower and not hasten yourself or be in a rush because that's simply going to in inhibit the digestion process it may also cause some bloating and if you're not paying attention to what you're eating then it may also lead to overeating so eat slower. Number 10 change up fasting. Although OMAD is amazing and quite effective I think that you shouldn't be on OMAD all the time. For some days you want to extend your eating window and change your fasting routine a little bit. I think that daily time restricted eating is still very important and you don't have to change that it's just that on some days change your routine a little bit and eat at some other times. That's going to prevent metabolic adaptation and keeps your body more metabolically flexible. This is madness! And these are the top 10 tips for OMAD. Bonus tip, you want to become fat adapted and metabolically flexible. That's going to make the fasting period much easier, you're going to have less hunger 
and you will also teach your body to burn more body fat. If you want to know how to fully turn on a metabolically flexible fat adaptive metabolism that includes intermittent fasting, autophagy, muscle growth, and training, then check out my metabolic autophagy masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay flexible, stay empowered.